lads. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Hey, fellas. Always good. Hey, guys. How are you, Mick, over there? Doing well, mate. Doing well. Humidity starting That's to increase. <laughs> Holy Moses. Uh, yes, of... Uh, we enjoy the the warm winters, but I tell you what, the uh, the sweat dripping down, my uh, you know what, at the moment is uh, is unlike anything. It is getting very humid, very nice. quick. Love it. Well, the temperature is probably going to go up in here a bit today because we are going to fucking smash seed oils. Yeah, one of the Vegetable topics. Oils. One of the topics we probably should have talked about sooner. I think, uh, as in, probably one of the most detrimental things to human health yeah for but a, the science for is out time. on that man the science is out on that there's, nope. there's such <laughs> no oh, man my research was so conflicting there yeah. was so much uh research to show that there was no harm there was a lot more research to show that there was mm. a lot of research has been withheld over many decades since the since seed oils became on the um what do they call it the uh the safe um, the grass, the, the generally recognised as safe um, uh, identification in the US. You can talk about the flawed science on vegetable yeah. oils for days. Can I just have a little um, little caveat here before we talk about this? One of our first episodes, we talked about seed oils. And as I introduced um, our little um, Ancestral Man podcast to my mates, my mate Jimbo, who lives in Esperance, shout out to Jimbo, he's a farmer, works his ass off. Hard, hard working man, great fella. He turned off our podcast after hearing us diss seed oils because he's a canola farmer. Mm. Um, and I just since but canola's used for other things. Other it than is, seed oil. it is, yes. Um, but I was just interested as to why, because canola, you, you drive down south, and canola, those canola fields are beautiful. That oh, yellow, yeah, yellow, yellow, yellow flower through, up through Geraldton. It's yeah. it's no, it's everywhere. Beautiful yeah. site, mm. yeah. But it seems to have overtaken wheat as as farming. Although it does say that um, it is the third largest crop in Australia behind wheat and barley. Well, that's how much we put an emphasis on vegetable oil in Australia. Well, it's because it's in everything. Everything. If you eat processed food, it contains a lot of... Mm. Well, well, let's characterise it. So when we're talking about seed oils... Yeah, well, what are they? So, so, so what is it? So let's describe what they are. So yeah. it's, a, it's a vegetable oil, it's canola oil, it's any of your sunflower oils. It's, it's essentially linoleic acid, which is omega-6. Um, but it goes under a lot of different guises. People yeah. call it plant oil now. Um, soy, canola, safflower, sunflower. Cotton seed. Oh, cotton seed's a big one, yeah. yeah. Grape seed. Yep. Rice bran. Rice bran. So they're not vegetable oils. So there is a d- distinction between vegetable oils and seed oils, yeah? No. Well... well they call them vegetable oils or th- seed yeah, oils? It's, yeah, it's... So they're a dietary fat, right? They're yes. basically an unsaturated, unstable. They're a polyunsaturated, which, polyunsaturated is, which is the problem. Which is many, many chains of. Uh, polyunsaturated means that it's missing uh, more than one um, hydrogen. Double chain. So Double if you have a chain in their fatty acid. Yeah. So we'll say so right. if you have like a saturated fat. Yep. Um, then it's not missing any uh, hydrogen atoms, which is an electron. Uh, mm. If if it's monounsaturated, it's missing one. And if it's polyunsaturated, it's missing more than one. Many, mm. right. And um, does that make it, That's it's un- un- instability. It's unstable. It makes it's it prone product. to uh, oxidisation. oxidization. So oxidization is the loss of an electron. Yep. And it makes gotcha. it liquid at room temperature, which yep. saturated fat is not. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So so the last thing that we want in our blood vessels and in our body is an, is an oxidated um, omega-6 Fatty acid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely detrimental. But so to make it, they use harsh chemical treatments to extract it, make it clear. Um, it's it's highly susceptible to damage from routine exposure to the sun, heat, and oxygen. Well, you know that's got to happen mm. through manufacturing, transport. Um, yep. And then it's even worse when you cook it. So. Serious oxidation occurs um, when you heat it up, and obviously they've designed it. One of the things you can do is look up how canola oil is made, and I don't want to. Sorry, Jimbo, but I can't. It is horrendous. It's it's heat treated. It's it was um, initially it was in the in the early nineteen hundreds. It was machine lubricant. Is mm-hmm. what they used it for, and then it, then they, 
sort of changed it over. But if you look up how canola is made, canola oil is made on YouTube, I don't think you'd ever want to use it again. Yeah, and nor should you. No. <laughs> so are we differentiating um, these oils being used for other products, but then also in their heating, the heating process? is that, That's when they become their most dangerous to our health. In their natural form, are they, ha- are they healthy? Well, if, no, you've, no. if you've already, if you've already heat treated them with harsh chemicals, um, to make them, cause usually make them an oil. Yeah. Usually they're rancid and they can't, yep. they can't, um, they can't stay healthy before they become rancid really quickly. So they've got to heat treat them and they, the way they produce them causes them already to be, have serious oxidative damage it, it would be almost impossible to consume like your omega-6 uh sort of oils without them being oxidized or becoming oxidized they'll just it, it will happen at the, the drop of a hat right so they're sometimes they say stable. cold pressed yeah what does um, that mean so that's the process they they don't use any heat on it and it's it's squeezed out using a press no heat no um chemicals but i don't know if that's any better I think it might be a marketing. Well, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to put it in an ingredient, and you're either going to fry it in a pan, or you're going to yeah. heat it in an oven, most likely. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's super detrimental to your health. I, I read somewhere that that um, process, Smitty, heating or the frying, uh, produces ALOEPs, Advanced Lipid Oxidation End Products. Yeah. And they they are um, have negative effects on your heart, and may increase the risk of types of cancer. And may decrease autophagy, which you know, obviously, in you know, a recycling of damaged proteins in in the cell. So, mm. um, and they're an absolute mitochondrial poison. Mm. The mitochondria being like our energy production powerhouse of all our cells. Yep, an absolute poison for your mitochondria. They're really, I mean, if you look back at the history of them, if you go back 150 years, people on general were only consuming like two or three grams of these, let's call them seed oils, blanket term, uh, in their diet per day, right? Whereas now you look at the standard sort of um, American diet or standard Western diet, we're getting up to 80 grams a day. Wow. And if you go back to the 1860s before they started using, uh, the first one that came out was really cottonseed oil, which was a byproduct of the cotton industry. And they sort of marketed that as a, as a something that they were adulterating uh, butter and lard with. And then it became more of a, uh, a common staple. But if you looked at the rates of diabetes, cancer, heart disease back then, they were almost non-existent. And you can pretty precisely track the introduction of seed oils and as they've gotten more and more mm. prolific with this absolute explosion in heart disease, cancer, diabetes, uh, macular degeneration is a huge one. Skin cancer. Skin cancer. Another and huge And we'll one. probably talk about that yep. as its own separate subtopic of this later. Yeah. I mean, these are absolutely super detrimental, but the problem is if you eat polyunsaturated fats, like your margarines and stuff like that with polyunsaturated fat in it can reduce your LDL, which is why sort of the cardiology world and that sort of thing have really jumped on it and said, oh, well, it's got to be good for you because it's going to reduce your LDL. LDL being uh, low, low density lipoprotein, which is what we know as our sort of bad cholesterol, which will cause heart disease. So it will lower that, but it's going to massively increase um, inflammation and the formation of foam cells and stuff like that, which we'll probably go into a bit more as well. So we've talked about, we've really, talked that about it on really previous bad. podcasts about LDL. Yeah, and whether it's, you know, is it the fireman or is it the arsonist? You know, is it the, is it the thing causing yeah. the problem or is it the thing coming in to clean up this oxidative damage caused by yep. poofers or you know polyunsaturated yeah. fatty acids? Well, if you go back to that eighteen like, sixties sort of time that I was talking about, when really there were no uh, seed oils being introduced into our diet, you just got from what you ate, you know, from whole foods, so very little, two or three grams a day. Most of people's fat intake was from, or all of people's fat intake was from animal sources. So it was from your, you know, your lards, your, your beef tallow, butter, and obviously eating actual animal fat. And their rate of heart disease was essentially zero. Uh, heart attacks were extremely rare. Heart disease didn't really exist. We had uh, very little cancer, very little diabetes. So I think that answers it right there, don't you reckon, CJ? Oh, yeah. You can, there is absolutely no way 
ancestral man had this in his diet? Of course not. We and need to make it clear though that that's not. We can't just blame those seed oils I think for that um, that <laughs> rapid. I do <laughs> because it, you, we're also talking about high sugar, um, uh, lack of like, you know sedentary lifestyles, that sort of stuff that can yeah. con- contribute to all those lifestyle factors or conditions that you just mentioned. We yeah. can't just solely blame seed oils, can we? But with this is the topic of the day, so we're going to talk yeah. about it. But there are other contributing factors. I believe, in oh. my, just my opinion, that they are the the biggest contributor. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, by uh, by far and away, a long, well, a long shot, cool. a long shot over sugar, over sugar, over sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, sugar is bad, but yeah. if you have a look at it, if you have a look at both of them, they're they're both highly palatable and they're highly processed and they're in just about everything, so they do go together. Mm. And yeah, you probably can't rule out one with the uh, the other, but there are natural sugars, right? So you can get sugar from fruit, in vegetables, honey, yeah, those kind of things. I don't think sugar is completely to blame. Mm. Uh, I would, I don't know, seventy five twenty five split, but yeah, yeah I, I I just think these are, if if you have a good deep look into it, are the worst. Thing for human health. Yeah, I, I read somewhere that they were introduced to market at a time in history, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, when food regulation was at its most minimal. Yeah. Mm. So there wasn't a lot of you know regulation at that time w- when these sort of products mm. were. Mm. So kind of came they became pretty big in the 60s. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard of Ansel Keys. Yes. So Ansel Keys, uh, you know, was paid to, to go out and do a study. They called it the, the uh, well, he, after, you know, he went out and he did his study. He, he came back and called it the diet heart hypothesis. And it was, you know, that saturated fat was kind of the devil. Um, th- the way that we can do it is through these seed oils. And um, in the end, it, that, that got disproved, found to be sort of incorrect and dishonest. Uh but that's sort of what he, his diet heart hypothesis was that, you know, saturated fat is causing heart disease. And that is the reason why these sort of oils came in. They were cheap, you know, easy to make. It was sort of often waste products from other bits and pieces. Mm. And yeah. So in the sixties, they kind of, they kind of shot through the roof. And like Smithy was talking about before, you can almost correlate bad health outcomes increasing in the amount of vegetable oils in the diet. Yeah. Well, I saw a graph. uh, Sorry, Mickey, you go, mate. um, You guys will probably be able to add a bit more to this because I know you've, uh, you've sort of dived right down the rabbit hole, but um, since this first got brought up with us uh, or on the podcast, guys, uh, it's, myself and wifey have actually gone full steam ahead Uh, we've tried to remove as many products as possible um from can you know from our daily consumption in in food and it was absolutely an eye-opener to to look at you know at everything we had in the house and and as you guys know we're we're pretty pedantic um you you know we, we we generally are relatively whole food orientated but even even looking at you know things like taco shells and and things like that as you guys had indicated the odd times when we have those it's just in everything but w- w- the research i did uh the, the, there seemed to be a real concern around high levels um of an inflammatory uh compound called linoleic acid um and, and uh, th- that's sort of a, a primary compound in these seed oils and again, as you guys have said, there seems to be uh, evidence out there, both pro and con, uh, although I'd be interested to dive into some of those researchers and see who, who was funding them because I think yep, spot on. some of them looked pretty alarming to me. Um, but uh, th- this linoleic acid c- continually came up and on both sides of the evidence, um, it indicated that in high levels, which certainly... Um, in, it is in, in seed oils. Uh, it is. It, there is definitive links. Uh, definitive links with heart disease, cancer, 
dementia um, and many, many, many other serious health issues. Is that is that particular compound something you guys have have found or or know much about? Yeah, that you're spot on, Mickey. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> linoleic acid, essentially omega six, not not exactly, but this is sort of exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about the the seed oils. Um, yeah, we're really talking about the the linoleic acid uh, component of it. So, yeah. if we consume linoleic acid uh, in our body, it becomes oxidized. Once it becomes oxidized in your body. It'll form a, a compound called 4-HNE. Uh, I'm not going to say the name of it. It's very long, but you can look it up. That is extremely toxic. Um, it's known to be like atherogenic, so it causes um, uh, you know, buildup of um, fat in your arteries. It's known to be mutagenic, carcinogenic, everything bad for you. It is such a highly toxic and damaging product to human health. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and really, it, you look at the root of it, and it comes from from linoleic acid, omega six. And they, those oils with the highest linoleic acid were grapeseed oils, sunflower, uh, corn, and soybean were the top four. Yeah, with the highest linoleic acid content in it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's frightening, and it's in everything. Like last um, week, we did a podcast on coffee. You look at all your alternative uh, milk replacements, like your your oat milks, your almond milks, all that. Almost all of them have got sunflower oil or um, yeah. safflower oil or one of those oils in them. And yeah, they're very, very damaging. And if you look at the evidence, we really want to reduce uh, our omega-6 to maybe like five grams a day. Um, and we're probably getting like 80 grams a day. And if you just have like three cups of uh, almond milk that's got um, sunflower oil in it, you're probably already getting close to five grams a day just out of that. So wow. it, yeah, it's... It's incredibly worrying and it's incredibly bad for you. Yeah. Well, we often talk about systemic inflammation in the body. We, did we do a podcast on that or was it, mm. it was one of our health? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Presidents of the world. Yeah. Yeah, we did inflammation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, systematic inflammation in the body and oxidative damage are two of the known causes of nearly all metabolic conditions. So, this is one, it's highly inflammatory and causes oxidative damage so yeah one thing that we could do is avoid them as best we can because it, it is producing metabolic conditions like you know diabetes and yeah it sure is obesity heart stroke complications cardiovascular yeah yeah and and <clears throat> you really need to be discerning so we talk about you know we, we, well, I mean, we've talked about what it is, you know, how can we avoid it? Well, it's, it's, in, it's in everything. And if you don't know, if you don't know that it's in the almond milk you get in your coffee, how do you, how do you find out? You've yeah. got to look at, you've got to be very discerning with, yep. with what you pick and yeah. what you cook your food in. So, you know, you, you, any processed food is going to have it in it. You're going to have to look at the, the list of ingredients. And like I was saying before, it is very, very cheap. So it makes products that are produced on mass easier or, or cheaper for the manufacturer and more profitable because if you're using something like or, uh, butter, probably is a better alternative, tallow, lard. Yep. Um, and, and how demonized have those things been? Oh. You, you cook with lard, you are crazy. You're yeah. going to get a heart attack. Well, butter? Are you butter, kidding me? Yeah. Get some margarine on your fork. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't think so. Mm. Well, margarine is a sort of one chemical component away from being plastic. Yeah. Oh. So margarine is one of the worst <laughs> foods. So any any processed food you can get rid of, get rid of your margarine, get rid of your rice bran oils, get rid of your uh, any vegetable oils you're cooking in. We listed them off before change your cooking to i mean even i mean a lot of people say that olive oil is a very good alternative avocado oil is another one but those those two still when you heat them mm. have oxidative damage so yep. um you know probably they, your they best smoke. best choices though aren't they cooked at a low heat they're a good choice your best choices would be a saturated fat yeah probably coconut, in, coconut oil is pretty good to cook coconut oil is heat. good yeah. Yep. Anything that's anything that's liquid at room, sorry, that is solid sorry. at room temperature. Butter, mm. ghee, ghee yeah. is a really yeah, good one. Really good. Um, yeah. Clarified butter, ghee, yeah. um, tallow, yeah. which is what beef fat, mm. lard. And is that, is that tallow? Is that what um, our mums used to leave in the fridge uh, for the weekly roast? So dripping. They, 
Yeah. yeah, like dripping. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, tallow is. I, someone will probably correct me, but tallow is beef. Yeah, uh, lard is something else. So, I mean, you can catch the the grease from bacon. I, the, the, I mean, there's some people that will talk about that not being ideal as well. You want beef beef from, you know, the tallow from beef that's grass fed. Yeah. Grass finished. Um, a lot of those, a lot of pork is really high in, what is it, omega six anyway. Yeah. So, you know, and and they're eating grain. You know what I, pigs are like. They're I think the big rolling problem in their own shit is because they're, I, I believe, pigs are monogastric. They have one yeah. uh, stomach. You want a ruminant so animal. So any of your ruminants uh, are really good at uh, processing and not uh, building up omega six. Whereas if they're monogastric, so like one stomach, like us or you know pigs or chickens or whatever, uh, they can have quite high levels of omega-6. It'll yeah. accumulate uh, in their fat stores and then you eat that and you're getting that high level, yeah. uh, which is why you, your red meats are, are so good, um, beef and things like that, because they're ruminants. Yeah. That's, that's the real advantage of eating red meat. So, uh, I don't know, that's probably a good segue about storage in your fat. Yeah. So yeah, let's get into that. P- poofers, polyunsaturated fatty acids are stored in our body fat. So if we have excess amounts of body fat, we're going to have excess storage of this inflammatory or um, fat in our body. So one way that we can get rid of it is to exercise, reduce our body fat. Obviously, you've got to reduce your intake, but we don't want it storing in our body fat. Um, we we could we could talk about it as related to sun damage and being damaging in your fat cells, but we we'll, we can go onto that if mm. you want a bit later. But yeah, we, we want to probably reduce our, definitely reduce, get rid of all the foods that have got it in, reduce our intake of vegetable oil as best we can and reduce some of our body fat to, to burn it off and get mm. get rid of it out of our system. You just highlight a bit of a, a tricky issue there uh, with regards to the meat we eat. Uh, mm. you know, you, you, a person can try their best to eliminate these oils out of their diet, but then they might not be aware that the meat that they're consuming, that animal is... Uh, eating grain-fed shit, which is based upon these these seeds. Uh, so you're, you're inadvertently consuming them anyway. Mate, chicken is a classic example. Yep. Everyone thinks, oh, yeah, I had a chicken breast really good. Chicken is full of omega-6. Because yeah. what do we feed our chickens? Yeah. We feed them corn. We feed them soy. Yep. That builds up in their tissue, and then you eat it. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't believe chicken is actually a very healthy meat. No, um, mate. I've seen some videos where you wouldn't eat chicken again if after watching no. it. Oh, especially the you know the horrible life they have, the cage, yeah, and all that sort of stuff. But I, even free range chicken, if if they're sort of fed like those, uh, you know, corn, soy, things like that, I don't think it's very good for you at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The feed is different to the vegetable oil. It is, it is, but it still has high levels of um, linoleic acid omega six. And I, I guess if they're f- the, the, even worse for them would be the feed being made with vegetable oil. Well, some of them have those pellets yeah, and actually yep. physically add canola Fish, oil and yep. stuff like that to them. Yep. So to I mean, that's, that's together really and, yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a double whammy of yeah. chicken. Even uh, salmon, you know, the farm fed uh, yeah, the the salmon farms, mm. those pellets are full of omega-6. Mm. And obviously salmon and fish is known for having really high levels of omega-3. Well, they're getting higher and higher levels of omega-6 and all these other toxins as a result of that. Is what they're eating. Yeah. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, so it's it's a conundrum. It's a yeah. sneaky little oil because it's bloody snuck into everything. Yeah. yeah, you've just got to read every bloody label That's if you right. do eat yep. packaged food. Yeah, yep. you need to read the label and see what oils are in there. Yeah, yeah. I th- uh, one of the <clears throat> through my health coaching stuff that I've done, one of the things that was the easiest thing to do for people was to say, you know, with with regards to diet and getting people to eat healthier, was if it's got vegetable oil in it, don't eat it. And if you can eliminate any food that's got vegetable oil in it, you're going to go all right, almost, you know, as a, as a starter. Then you might want to move to sort of reducing sugar and grains and, and whatnot. But if you reduce, if you get rid of any food that has vegetable oil in it, you're inadvertently getting rid of highly processed foods, lots of sugars, lots of grains. Yep. And and if you go, you know, oh, I'm going to have this muesli bar. Okay, you look at it, vegetable oil, can't have it, no good. I have, I'm going to have this bit of whatever it is. Chips, vegetable, no, no good. So you eliminate, you can eliminate 
some bad foods quite easily mm. by just looking at the veg the ingredients list like you were talking about there mm. and then getting rid of it that's a great point yeah mm. and isn't it so easy just so instead it, of grabbing a muesli bar get a banana yeah it, it yep. seems it seems quite straightforward doesn't it yeah but it does yeah yep. convenience convenience but how convenient's a banana it's yeah. there you unwrap it yeah, yeah. you just can't, can't take it on a hiking packaging. trip though because yeah. it goes you might get a bit squashed well that's true you have to chuck yeah, it in a little yeah. container and yeah, then you've got more containers to carry yeah. apples yeah. apples well mm. then you can go with some Beef jerky or Beef something. Beef jerky, you know? yeah. Oh, th well, there's another one. You've got to be discerning, right? Yeah. Because it is vegetable oil laden. Mm. Beef, main ingredient, vegetable oil will be the second. Yep. Right. right. Oh, I didn't so even think about that. you need to get some that. good ones. There's a company called Barbell Foods. Yeah. Really, really good. It's pretty much just jerky. They here in WA? No. <laughs> you got to order them <laughs> online. All right. But uh, they do sell them in Aldi and they're... I think they're in Woolworths. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. Shout out to them. Yeah, nice. shout yeah. out. I could go some beef jerky right now. Yeah. Let's I'll get them to jerky. sponsor us. Yeah. That'd be good. I love sponsor beef. Us oh, jerky. Sorry, Mick. Sorry. <laughs> 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 but, well, I, I did want to ask Mick about um, now that you've looked into it and being um, on the vegan side of the diet, is it is it are vegetable oils high in the vegan world? Have you noticed? Uh, well, I think that there's two ways of, 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 of answering that or two ways of looking at that. <laughs> I'll put you on the spot um, real sorry, but, um, <laughs> no, that's okay. he's politician. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's an inter it's an interesting question because, um, you know, w as I, I think we've sort of said before, you know, w we, we're introducing in a little bit of consumption of, of animal based products again in the last, uh, sort of two or three months. Um, but, but in order, in order to answer your question, we've got to look at this and like eating a, a, a more mainstream diet, you guys would agree that you, you can eat a healthy version of that, or you can eat an unhealthy version Definitely. of that. Yeah. And, and the unhealthy version of that is probably one which is, is, uh, contains a high consumption of processed food, um, you know, limited, um, consumption of fruit, vegetables, um, organic meats and, and things like that. So, so when we, when we look at the lens of veganism or plant-based eating, um, I think uh, there, there's a, there's a quotient of those people who are choosing to be a part of that group because they, uh, they are aggrieved with the consumption of, of animals as their primary uh, reason for, for choosing to be in that movement. What I sort of see in those people is that they're consuming, they are then consuming high levels of processed foods. Now, seed oils in these processed, in these vegan processed foods are extreme. They're a primary component of, yeah. of putting them together. Mm. So in, in, in that regard, those people I feel would actually be better off uh, n not actually, you know, not actually being plant-based at all yeah. because they're just consuming high levels of processed food, whether it's the plant-based meats uh, or, or, or any of those sorts of things. Now, if you eat, if you eat more whole foods plant-based like we have, you're eating fruits and vegetables. You're eating, you know, minimal processed food. So, Similarly to, I guess, the more mainstream uh, nutrition consumption, if you choose to eat in that way, then you're not you're not interacting with these seed oils as frequently. But if you choose to eat, you know, the the, the high processed food, then it's in everything. It is in absolutely everything. The alarming one for me was what you guys said earlier, which was was looking at the milks. Because um, we literally went through everything. Like I stripped the pantry back and I went through everything. And I read the labels and I went, you know, the, the pile on my kitchen counter at the end uh, was, was, was shocking to me. Wow. It was absolutely shocking. Good and that's you. in a house that is healthy. You know, mm. like, yep. um, you know, we don't buy the muesli bars. We, we, make, we make, you know, pretty much everything that you can think of uh, that you could buy out of pure convenience for snacks for kids. Generally, we make. We make our own bars. We make our own bread. You know, my wife makes her own sourdough. Um, 
you know, it, it, we make our own kombucha, you know, all sorts of things. We, we've become very self-sufficient, but even still going through, like, then the milk was a big eye-opener for me. It was like, how, how the hell is this shit in, in milk? Like, yeah. <laughs> it, does, it just doesn't make sense. What, um, what milk are you talking, mate? Yeah, it was, it, um, well, it, it's in almond milk, it's in oat milk, um, any of those, obviously it's in soy milk. Um, and, you know, I guess another topic we'll have to confront down the line is 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 the con- is consumption of dairy. Dairy is something that my wife and I will never go back to. Um, and I know you guys are all, um, or I, certainly conversations we've had, you, you guys all consume dairy and, and have um, differing opinions on that. But... Um, that's something we won't move back to, but we, we then had to go and look to source a milk that was, um, you know, free, free of any of those seed oils. And we managed to find that. Mm. Yeah, cool. That's yeah. a good little, um, well done for doing that, going through your pantry, mate, and getting, putting all those f- foods on your, on your kitchen bench top. It's, uh, that's probably a worthwhile exercise for everyone to do. Yeah. And, and looking at, looking at the, the vegan perspective, yeah, really interesting that you know that you've got vegans that are healthy eating sort of raw natural stuff and then you've got the other side of it where they're you know they're not they're eating a lot of processed mm. processed interesting junk, so. yeah 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 good good perspective i liked it here's a really short one for you guys that blew my mind <coughs> you know they have like the lab uh mice and the lab rats and they often uh, like to induce cancer in them so they can study them for various reasons well, they've got a diet and a process that they follow, right, to ensure that these guys get cancer and they can do things, they can knock out genes and stuff like that. But they also give them this, uh, basically this carcinogenic diet, right? And in the recipe for this carcinogenic diet, it doesn't say like, you know, maybe put omega-6 in or omega-6 will help. It says omega-6 is required for this carcinogenic diet. <laughs> it is required to give them cancer. Yeah, if you take that omega six component out of all the other shit they put in that food to give them cancer, it doesn't work. Wow, You've got to put the seed oil in to get them to get have cancer. Mm. And we look at the fucking explosion of cancer from yeah. eighteen sixty when we didn't consume any or, or very little. Yeah, to current day where we are consuming like the average American with a poor diet is having like eighty grams of this stuff a day, and like one in three people are getting cancer. Wow, it is a big contributor. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the only contributor. There's lifestyle and there's exercise and there's smoking and there's diet and there's a whole bunch of things, but that is a big contributor. Yeah. And that terrifies me hearing about that. Yeah. That's crazy. And then you look yeah. at it and it's in everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's in everything. It's crazy. Yeah. Eating. Is it is it is it a conspiracy stretch too far? You know, and I'll, I'll throw this out there just for, for consideration, guys. We know all of these different industries are, are interconnected okay and 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 we've thrown out some pretty um out there perspectives in terms of um you know our, our points for consideration around you know why there might not be resolutions to certain diseases like cancer and cardiovascular disease and things like that but is it a stretch too far to think that these things have been purposely put into food to create illness? Oh, mate, yeah. Uh, I don't want to... I, mean, I, I don't want to... Yeah. I, yeah. May, maybe. I, I, I reckon a lot of these things are produced as byproducts and then someone yeah. goes, hey, we can make some money yeah. out of this. Yep. Let's feed this to the population. Yeah. Exactly. And then... Yeah. Yep. Then, then, then the money becomes involved and corporations become involved and then they, then they hide negative effects. I think it sort of happens by consequence, not... Yeah. Mm. I don't think they've... St- They've set out to produce something that's detrimental to human health. I think you're right. I think it's been a byproduct of several things. And then this Ansel Keys study and then all these other bits and pieces. Oh, we can make some money off this. Yeah. Mm. This is a byproduct of, of a waste production of... Yeah. It's it's economic, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, if you look in the 1860s, no one knew that this is going to be detrimental to health, no. right? We haven't worked... We've only really worked this out in the last, yeah. say, say, 10 years, right? Yeah. But in the 1860s, they had a massive cotton industry and they had this byproduct, this oil, um, cottonseed oil. Yeah. Yeah. What do we do with it? Oh, well, shit, we can use it as a food. We can use it to replace uh, butter and beef tallow and lard and things that cost a lot of money to make. Cheap. It's cheap. Yeah. yeah. It was like, you know, pennies on the dollar to produce that versus uh, butter... 
So we're going to slip this in and use it. And then all these big corporations start going, well, it's plentiful. We can grow it forever. And we grow all these just canola. and Get Good margins on it. Good margins. Yep. Um, we've decided it's inverted commas safe because um, it's a polyunsaturated fat, which will reduce your LDL. But that's not the whole story. That's a very small part of the story. And we're just addicted mm-hmm. to that um, use of it now. And I don't think we can get away from it. No, yeah. No. And it's, um, you know, what price you put on the public's health, you know, and you just wish that you get to this point now and there's obviously studies being done. And if there was a skerrick of a, of, an op- of a chance of it causing cancer, why wouldn't someone stand up and go, oh, look, we're not quite sure about this. Stop consuming it until we just really finalise the data on it. Mm. But nah. I think there is evidence. Yeah, I know, there's but it's up to us to make that decision. I like, know there's what you're no saying there's never going to be anyone that's going to stand up and say, "Hang on." Yeah, there's no stop FDA. The music. No, yeah. Yeah. going to come out and say, "Look, we're a bit worried about this. It's causing possibly causing cancer. Just give yeah. us a, a bit of time to do some research and 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 come out with some findings, official findings, and then." But they, the they problem, don't, the problem is, you can't study that. You you can't. Well, you probably can, but well, you can't. You can't give. You can't give something to someone knowing that it's going to cause an issue, right? That, that, that's the problem with PFOS and PFOA, which we may talk about in the future, is they know it's bad. 3M pulled it off the shelves, but you can't, you can't get any studies done on it because you know, you know, like a double-blind placebo study in... You know, the best you can do is standard. animal studies, um, cellular studies, in vitro studies... I mean, there are things that you can do human studies on to find how the body reacts, like not actually causing a disease, not causing a cancer. But so, for for example, one that I've found, um, so, you know, testing goes through certain levels. You've got in vitro, like they test in cells, so they'll implant cells in a particular environment. You've got in vivo uh, where they test uh, with animals and then you've got human trials. So this human trial I found was... um, uh, oxidized LDL as a risk of a risk biomarker for cardiovascular disease, and in 2017, uh, they got 42 men with coronary artery disease. So they've already got the disease, right? They've already got coronary heart disease. Mm-hmm. Um, compared with 40 men without it, they found that the men with coronary art dis- coronary artery disease had a significantly significantly different LDL cholesterol composition, which inc- included higher levels of lin- linoleic acid and aric arachidonic acid and inflammatory byproduct of of linoleic acid. Mm. Their cholesterol was also significantly more oxidized and structurally damaged uh, than the the guys without coronary artery disease. So artery disease. So you can do tests on humans uh, to identify the effects of or or the status of a disease, I guess. I guess the PFOS one was probably a bad example because they know that's bad. So they can't they can't physically yeah. give that to a human and go because we know this is no because yeah. it's a poison yeah. it's a poison yeah, yeah. I, I think that's different for this though isn't it um, certainly in any study there's ethical questions Jonesy you, you're absolutely spot on but yeah. I think it's a bit different with this because just about everyone on in the planet is consuming consuming seed oils mm. and and probably a large proportion of those people are unwilling to remove you know many or all of the of the um, things they're consuming sort of day to day. So a study could be as simple as, um, you know, compiling men, women and children who are eating relative, a relatively normal Western diet that are consuming these seed oils and then looking for um, a separate group, e.g. people like ourselves who uh, are not consuming consuming seed oils or, you know, are minimalizing the, the amount of seed oil that they're consuming and then looking to do some sort of uh, longitudinal study where you look at the, you know, the shorter, medium and long-term effects. Now, those studies are extremely expensive, extremely difficult to coordinate because you're relying on those people staying engaged. But wouldn't the data be really, really interesting to compare, um, particularly taking children like our own who, 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 you know, whose uh, consumption of these oils will, will probably be minimal in the next 10 to 15 years. And then, you know, comparing them to, to children in say a relatively average normal family who are, who unknowingly are, are probably consuming a lot of these things in the day-to-day things that they're eating. 
Mm. Well, it's un- until you know better, right? Like you say, normally, yeah. you, you, you're being told that this is healthy. Yeah. You're being told yeah. this is the way to do it. This is, you know, reducing your LDL, your cholesterol will go down. This is healthy for you. And people are like, okay, mm. cool. I'm, mm. I'm healthy. I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. But until you know better, you know, you, you, you do what you, you can, can't you? Maybe they could do studies on animals that are close to humans. So there was a, a study done in 2008 which involved young piglets. Uh, one group of the piglets were required were given required amounts of linoleic acid to prevent deficiency in it, so which was 1.2% of their overall calories, yep. versus another group uh, which were given high amounts, which equated to about 10, 11% of their, um, of their uh, overall calories. The, the low intake group had healthy, normal brain development in those little piglets, but the group consuming linoleic acid levels of 10 to 11% of overall calories had impaired and altered neurological development. So that's in pigs, and, and they often do a lot of experiments with pigs because we do have similar sort of I don't know, biology, maybe. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, they've done a lot of these studies uh, dating back like many, many decades where they've looked at native indigenous populations around the world that have essentially had no linoleic acid, no, very little, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say no, because it's, it's an essential fatty acid, right? So you need a, a very small amount of it. Uh, we can't make it, but if you eat any food, you'll get enough. But they've looked at some of these populations. Uh, a few come to mind, so like the, the Maasai Bushmen, uh, I think oh, they're yeah. in uh, Kenya. Those guys eat a lot of, um, a lot of animal um, flesh, uh, they eat a lot of honey and they drink a lot of blood. Uh, but essentially, there's no sort of linoleic acid in that. They have zero heart disease. Yeah. And, then, and then there was another study from um, some native, uh, I think from New Guinea, who had uh, very high saturated fat. Their saturated fat in their diet was approaching 50% of their total calorie intake. Hmm. Zero heart disease. Wow. Yeah. Nothing. And then you look at some of, they've followed some of these uh, tribes over the decades retrospectively. And once some of these seed oils and stuff come into it, boom, heart disease. Mm. Like, oh, it must be all the saturated fat they're eating. It's like, well, what about when they're eating 50% of their daily yeah. calorie intake with yeah. saturated fat before the intake of these other things? And it wasn't a problem. Yeah. And then I'm going to reference another quick uh, study here. We all know that, well, we don't all know, but uh, many of us know that like low density lipoprotein, LDL, sort of combines, I'm dumbing this down really quick, with macrophages in your bloodstream and it forms these foam cells, right? These are what sort of inundate your uh, arterial lining to cause clots and things like that. Well, if you just put low density lipoprotein, LDL, in with macrophages, it will not become a foam cell unless it also has omega-6 and the lake acid. It will not form a foam cell. Yeah, right. And that makes perfect sense when you when you link that back to some of these indigenous populations who are eating half their calorie intake of saturated fat and they're not getting any heart disease. Well, maybe it's because they don't have any, very little, sorry, uh, omega-6 and the lake acid. Yeah. Mm. I just shake my head at that, man. Yeah, oxidative stress. There's no oxidative stress, massive, yeah. Macrophages yeah. are coming in for. Yeah. yeah. And the and the L, the LDL, yeah. yeah, and that's not woo woo science either. No, no. Oh, like no. I mean, in my um, postgrad degree I did in nutrition, it's an established fact that if you have high levels of LDL with the absence of oxidative stress, it's not going to accumulate in your arteries. That's right. That's so not up the, for debate. That's a well known fact. The oxidative stress is the arsonist. Yeah. And the LDL is the fireman coming to put it out. Absolutely. And that's what this answer keys. You know that heart study back in the yeah. '60s. They were like, well, look at all this LDL that's here in yep. all these people that have heart disease. Yep. And it wasn't there because of, you know, it mm. was causing the problem. It was there because it was trying to fix the problem. Yep. Is, uh, is some of the theory. And, and the other huge problem in the 50s and 60s was we had a massive rate of smoking and smoking causes mm. like heaps of oxidative, oxidative stress. stress. There you so go. if you do have really yeah. high levels Come of saturated fat and you're full of oxidative stress, that's going to be a problem for mm. you. Mm. Yep. But if you're living a clean life, you're not smoking, you're not filling yourself full of seed oils, but you're getting a lot of saturated fat, seems yeah. like no problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, a couple of things, because I looked into, well, you know, we're getting all this oxidative stress and oxidative damage from vegetable oils. You know, you, you can do your very, very best to avoid them. But say I go out for dinner and I want to order a grass-fed steak, you know, with some vegetables or whatever, they're going to cook that in vegetable oil. Yep. No doubt about it. No doubt. So if I don't say, please cook that in butter, they 
who knows what they're doing back there, right? <laughs> you, you can't, you can't. Yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah sure, butter boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, am I avoiding it completely? Definitely not. So what are the things I can do to stop or help with the oxidative stress? So one of the things I found really interesting because I kind of typed it in and coenzyme Q10. Mm. Uh, there was a study done in 2005 Coenzyme Q10 protects from aging-related oxidative stress and improved mitochondrial function in the heart of rats fed a high PUFA, polyunsaturated fat-rich diet. So it increased their lifespan, decreased their oxidative stress. A high, the high PUFA diet caused damage to the cells in the pancreas that produce insulin and therefore, you know, decreases the blood sugar handling ability of those, of those mice. So... One way to counteract the the bad benefits, bad benefits of a vegetable oil rich diet is to have coenzyme Q10. The other one was glycerin that I found. So well, that that helps moisturise the skin, but it cleanses the gut, improves healing, helps retain water, protects the immune system, uh, and contribute contributes to mitochondrial health and anti aging effects. So there are a couple of things that we've kind of looked into that. Sort okay. of went okay. So could you have those as a supplement. You could, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. coenzyme Q10 and the, the uh, what was it? Glycerin. Glycerin. Yeah. Mm. You can get those as a sup. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> glycerin can be found in made by vegetable oil or animal fat. So you probably got to look at an animal fat one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if you're exposed to high levels of this uh, linoleic acid in, through seed oils, vegetable oils, you want to consider maybe a supplement. But if you're living a life that's not Pretty clean. You're not consuming you know, yeah. processed foods yeah. and stuff like well, that. I think that co- coenzyme Q10 is found in the heart, right? So if you're having, if you have, oh yeah, having heart meats and heart, yeah, organ meats, mm. organ meats, yeah. yeah. So yeah. and you know they they say if you want to fix your heart, you know, have an improved heart, eat heart, you know. So mm. yeah, coenzyme Q10 high in in heart. Mm. Yeah, right. Organ. So that, that sorry, mate. No, go yeah. ahead. That restaurant. Eating out thing is yeah, a is a tricky a one. one. Like how, is, how do you get yeah. around that though? Like you you don't know who's what they're cooking your food in. Correct. Are uh, you best when you go to a restaurant just order a salad? <laughs> no salad dressing. Yeah. It's got so much seed oil in it. Yeah. But do they put salad dressing on there? Can you ask for oh, the salad dressing on the side? side yeah. But I mean, you have a Caesar salad. What's it yeah. made of? Caesar dressing. I used to make it when I used to work in a restaurant. Yeah, right. It's full of um, vegetable oil, canola oil. Yeah, okay. So it's any like sources? Any sources or yeah? Yeah, any sources. Mayonnaise, oh. salad or uh, salad dressings, all full of vegetable oils. You can get you can get some good mayonnaises. So the good source company makes some good ones yeah. uh, with with olive oil rather yep. than vegetable oil. Yep. So it's probably a good alternative. But yeah, very. So if you're going out for dinner, what do you what do you get then? <laughs> it leaves it pretty limited. Steak and steamed vegetables. Definitely maybe. don't get uh, anything from the deep fryer. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. those deep fryers are full of cottonseed oil. And yeah. they reuse those oils they too, don't they? They reuse it and over they and over again. Which makes it worse. Reuse it yeah. And they take it out and filter it and put it back in it again and reuse Ugh, it. That's just disgusting. Yeah. So steak and steamed veggies are the way to go. Yeah. You could have like a sous vide steak if they're doing it there. Oh, it's not in yeah. contact with any oil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then it's cooked in a plastic bag, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. You, could, you could ask them to cook it in butter. Yeah. Yeah. But like you say, they'll probably spit on it. Yeah. <laughs> the girl no, goes out the know. back, hey, chef, we've got another another greenie out here. He wants yeah. his steak cooked in yeah, butter. Yeah, sure you do. Oh, you really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any greenie is ordering your steak yeah. wrapped in butter. <laughs> <laughs> but what day, yeah. ancestral greenie. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah interesting. Yeah. Hey, mate, with you talking about... Um, Oxidative stress and stuff before it just uh, made me think about the the sunburn. Oh yeah, that was one I wanted. Yeah, to talk what's about. the deal with that? Interesting topic. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, so there's a close link to the sort of pigment form formation, and when exposed to the sun, sort of that's where we're talking about the poofers are storing in our sort of fat cells. Yeah. Um, so free radical damage is occurring. So it was most likely. So I mean, yes, too much UV radiation r- radiation is going to cause the skin damage, but um, that lipid peroxidation, which is sort of otherwise known as sort of oxidative stress yeah. or oxidative damage um, coming from the poofers or stored in your in fat, your cells? fat, fat cells. Fat yeah. cells, yeah. Um, 
so you're going to have an increased sensitivity to UV radiation. Mm. So if you're having a high vegetable oil diet and you go out in the sun, you're going to burn quicker. So you're basically cooking yourself from under your skin. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And look at our increase in skin cancer yep. since yeah, the introduction of seed oils. Yeah. Yep. So we're not to say... Go and look at... Uh, obviously, there's been a hole in our ozone layer and other uh, factors. Sunscreen. Yeah. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. Don't get me started on that. Yeah. yeah. That'll be another whole uh, podcast one of these days. Yeah. But yeah. especially yeah. if you uh, combine a low seed oil diet and you take uh, astaxanthin, Oh, yeah. Um, that'll massively reduce your um, skin's desire, for want of a better word, to get burnt. So astaxanthin is the pink stuff in salmon? Uh, I don't know where it comes from. I oh, know it's a supplement. I'm not sure where it's yeah. uh, origin, which, which, what its I'd origin say it is. Which would be omega-3 related. Possibly, yeah. 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 Um, I'm, I'm fairly sure that, yeah, that, that's the chemical that gives salmon its pink colour. Okay, yeah, yeah, there you go. Is, it a good, is that a good chemical? Because yeah. salmon's not naturally pink, is it? It's grey. Yeah. Well, is it yeah. grey? It uh, is. In, in those feedlots, they... They colour them. They colour yeah. them, but they are pink. Yeah. Like, certainly that astaxanthin is, is a beneficial supplement if you take it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know about the salmon colour flim flam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that is evidence right there, isn't it? That if you have a high PUFA diet, you're going to burn super easily. Mm. And if you yeah. reduce it, you can literally buy more time in the sun where you don't need to have sunscreen you're not going to you're not going to get burnt wow yeah yeah and that's not we we either that is legit yeah 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 yeah, yeah so it's a lipid soluble pigment with red coloring properties there you go yeah 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 so i th- from memory i think it's the algae or the algae that um are high in astaxanthin that the salmon eat oh and yeah it gives us gives them the pink color so i think it's a it's a red colored algae yeah right yeah yeah so I was speaking to the guy at the seafood place down at the shops and he was saying that the only salmon that is found naturally pink is the one out in, in the Arctic Circle or whatever or in the freezing cold waters naturally are pink. Every other salmon in the world is grey, but, but they're coloured. Possibly. Yeah, interesting. I caught a salmon. I remember when I was a kid and it cooked up grey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Well, uh, apparently that's the animals who feed on this algae, like salmon, red trout, red sea bream, Flamingos, crustaceans, that's what gives them the red colour. Okay, and so that algae... Flamingos eat this... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that I'm algae saying. must grow then in, in temperate climates too because flamingos are in... Yeah. Where are flamingos? Africa? Africa, I think. Oh, South America. South America. In I don't know. Florida? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So alternatives for the punter to use is coconut oil, ghee. Yep. I've got to get myself some ghee. I went looking for it the other day. I couldn't find it. Just make it, mate. Yeah, how? yeah. Uh, so buy yourself some organic butter from the supermarket, yeah. um, which is cheap as chips, uh, and then you're basically just uh, clarifying it. So you're essentially um, cooking it up, uh, and then you sort of strain off all the milk solids and stuff, and what you're left with is just the pure sort of oil from it, which is the ghee. Okay. Uh, so I don't exactly know how to do it, but my missus does it at home, yeah. and she just buys blocks of butter and heats it, and then there's some sort of straining process. But if I'm really concerned about uh, reducing my uh, seed oil I think, and if I want to use something like ghee, why don't I just get the organic butter and use that for my to fry my steak? Yeah, up? you could. Yeah, ghee goes yeah. uh, a bit hotter. You know, butter like oh, tends okay. to go brown. Like if you put it in a pan and yes. you heat it up, and then it goes. Br- ghee doesn't do that. Oh, it's more like gotcha. oily sort of thing, so you can heat oh. it up higher. So if you're cooking a steak with it, it doesn't burn. You can gotcha. get it from health food shops. Oh yeah, you yeah. Can. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now a guy at work told me about it. He showed me his, and um, yeah, he said go and get some of this, and I look yeah. for it. I have to look a bit harder. But just in in that farming thing, um, shout out to Jimbo. Yeah, poor um, Jimbo. Yeah, I, I don't feel bad. We want to talk about regenerative farming, don't we? Definitely um, coming up. Yeah. Well, apparently yeah, yeah. canola fi- um, crops are good for regenerative regenerative farming. Yes. They yeah. Um, they yeah. have a, a high uh, tolerance to pests yeah. or weeds. Hmm. Um, the cattle can eat them. Yeah. In that form, and it's not you know because it's not highly refined. It's not mechanically. Yeah. Solvent treated to get vegetable oil, and because they're a ruminant as well, so they're yeah. not going to accumulate that omega six. Break it down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so for farmers, it's a good break crop. Yes. Like, yeah, to, oh, yeah? In, yeah. in that cycle of regenerative yeah. farming, yeah. so there is a place oh, I'm, for I'm it. Super keen on that. That'd be great. I'd yeah. love to. I'd love to get someone like a real expert on and talk about regenerative. It's farming. such a cool topic. It's so good, and it's really important as well. Yeah. What oh, if I could get Jimbo up here? Jimbo is he yeah. a regenerative farmer? Is he regen? Oh, I'm sure he's, he's, he's. I'm not sure. I'd have to ask him about that. <laughs> have a chat. Yeah, I, I, it'd probably um, be hard I to get a word out of him. He doesn't. He doesn't say too much, Jimbo. He's one of those strong, staunch. Mm. 
That was... I've actually got a close friend, guys, who's um, one of the leaders in Australian permaculture farming. There you go. Awesome. He's driving the movement down in New South Wales. Um, he actually high-end business, high-end businessman who about eight years ago left everything behind in Perth, moved over to Queensland. Um, highly educated guy, and, and uh, it'd be really interesting to get on. Yeah. And pick the brain off. He's he's a really inspiring guy. So that that would uh, be a really good one. That's in, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting topic. Sort of. Yep. Food production, climate change, sustainability, sustainability oh. really, really huge. Really gonna, Low yeah. tox. Yeah. Low tox yeah. Yeah. Like, are these farmers going to have any land over east? With yeah. it seems to be all this sort of climate um, affecting mm. things going on, and governments buying back land for smart cities, or whatever. Doom and gloom. Yeah. Oh, here yeah. we go. But no, there'll be there'll be some good topics. I'm looking forward to yeah. digging yeah. into some more uh, agricultural type stuff down the track. Beautiful. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, well, if anyone wants to reach out, they can. Probably should have... I keep saying I should mention our email at the start because maybe people don't get to the end of the episode, you know? They don't, if they don't get to the end of the episode, they don't get to hear Smithy's finishes. And yeah. Anyway. Yeah. They just get to hear me saying our email address is the modern, modern ancestral man at gmail.com. M-O-D-E-R-N-A-N-C-E-S-T- R A L. That was painful. M A N at gmail dot com. And if you're on Spotify, give us a like. Yeah, give yeah. us a rating. Give us yeah, a five star that, rating. Yeah, that's that. That really help yeah. us. Yeah, get us on there. Yep. And if they're from Belgium, send us an email. Mate, we, we, we didn't get, get any the last top, week, did we? Top hundred of Belgium. I know, That'd but be awesome. a week's passed. Did we get an email from anyone in Belgium? Come on, you Belgiques. Send us some waffles. <laughs> Just don't cook them in seed oil. The Belgian dip. All right. Well, there's All some right. action going over there with the farmers in there. In Am- uh, Netherlands? Yes. Man, that's some shit going down over the there. same spot, though. No, it's no, not. no, it's not, no. but it's a neighbouring... <laughs> they share a border. They share a border. It's a neighbouring yeah. country. I, I, dro- I rode a bike from... Uh, my wife and I, we rode a bike from uh, yeah. some place in Netherlands to, to Belgium, across the border. It was a real windy day. It was a prick of a day. We, we were on a bike for six hours. <laughs> Three hours to the border. We crossed it and thought, fuck this, let's go back. We rode back, back to Amsterdam. So you rode we were. three hours to say fuck this, and then rode back. Three hours to say we'd ridden from somewhere in Amsterdam, uh, Netherlands to Belgium. Oh, and back uh, and back again across the border. I think we went somewhere in Belgium for the, some chocolates. There was a chocolate oh, factory, you know, totally. the Belgium chocolate. Mm. Yeah, we went there. I'll, I'll travel miles for chocolate. Maybe we could do a podcast on chocolate. Ooh, I, I think we chocolate. definitely should yeah. do a podcast yeah. on chocolate. Mm. Yep, it could be like our coffee one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'll go because 90%. I mean, chocolate's got benefits. You know, yeah, yeah, bloody yeah. beneficial. Antioxidants. Yeah. Addictive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not on the level of coffee or no. nicotine. No. But anyway, anyway, that was good. Yep. Good stuff. Good to see yeah. you guys, as always. Reach out to us if you want. Thanks, guys. See you, Mickey. See ya. See you, guys. Take care.